The movie begins by showing a girl named Anna Pirani, often called Purani, who had had a talent and passion for culinary arts. Even at a young age, Purani could accurately guess every ingredient with her eyes closed. Purani's talent stems from her father named Ranga, as she has been accustomed to accompanying and assisting her father in cooking, as Ranga's profession is the head cook at a Hindu temple. Not only skilled in cooking, Purani also has extensive knowledge about food. This is evidenced by her daring to criticize mistakes in the food made by her schoolmate's father named Kirti. Although Kirti's father, Arasupai, is quite popular as a local chef, Purani admits that she can make the same dish taste even better. Purani's words proved true when Arasupai tasted her cooking. After that, Arasupai acknowledged and praised the deliciousness of Purani's food. While talking to Arasupai, Purani mentioned that she dreams of becoming the best chef in India, just like her idol, known as India's best chef currently, named Chef Anan, whom she always watches on television. But behind her grand ambition, Purani realizes that it's not easy for her to achieve her dream because her family belongs to the Brahmin caste, one of the exclusive Hindu groups with a belief in vegetarianism, refraining from eating meat. Sometime later, Purani is now an adult. At that time, she was scolded by her mother for refusing an arranged marriage. Furthermore, Purani quit her job at a private company, citing her ongoing efforts to pursue her dream of becoming a chef. Knowing this, Ranga was disappointed and refused to give permission, where he explained that if Purani became a chef, she would learn to cook meat and have to taste it, which is forbidden, and their family would be mocked by others. After that, Ranga instructed Purani to continue her education at the university by majoring in business management. However, Purani's childhood friend named Farhan remained loyal in supporting her dream of becoming a chef. In fact, Farhan encouraged Purani to enroll in the same program as him, which is hotel management. Not only obtained the registration forms for Purani, but Farhan also encouraged her, where he said that Purani had been sacrificing for her family and the judgment of others for years, whereas her future lay in her own hands. Therefore, it was the right time for Purani to follow her own heart. After careful consideration, Purani finally chose hotel management as her major at the university preferred by her father. Although Purani had to lie by pretending that she chose business management according to her father's expectations. During the course of her studies, Purani made some friends who were equally enthusiastic about learning to cook. Not only that, Arasupai was always willing to help by pretending to be a father figure for Purani whenever there were campus needs. One day, during a lesson on how to cut and cook chicken, Purani appeared very scared. This happened because she had been vegetarian since childhood. When Purani hid behind her friend, she was called upon to practice cutting. Unable to bear the fear, she fainted on the spot. This incident caused Purani to lose confidence and confess to Farhan that she couldn't continue her studies if she had to cook meat. However, Farhan, who was always by her side, reassured her and said that she could cook meat without having to taste it. Farhan explained that his mother, who was born a Muslim and also a vegetarian, could cook delicious biryani. Hearing this, Purani's doubts gradually disappeared, and she realized that being a chef meant being able to cook any ingredient. Therefore, Purani finally mustered the courage to cut and cook chicken into biryani rice. Unfortunately, her biryani rice didn't taste good, so it made her curious, and she tried Farhan's mother's biryani on the Islamic holiday. Unexpectedly, Farhan's mother's biryani rice was indeed very delicious. However, to this day, biryani rice is the only dish Purani has made that is said to be not tasty. Several months passed without any significant obstacles or challenges. However, a problem arose when Ranga suddenly came to the campus. Knowing this, Purani panicked and immediately changed her uniform, then ran to the business management department building, pretending to be a student there to avoid being caught in her lie. At that time, Ranga came to deliver the house keys because he was going to visit his sick brother. After that, he left, and Purani hurried back to her class. However, when Purani was practicing cooking and eating chicken, a major problem arose because her father suddenly returned and caught her eating meat. After that, Ranga was immediately judged by the Brahmin community for what they deemed as disrespecting their religion and tarnishing Brahmin beliefs. Even Ranga, who had served for 20 years, was fired from his position as the head chef of the temple. Knowing this, Purani deeply regretted causing her father's suffering. Therefore, 
she dared not to fight back and decided to leave the campus. Even when her father arranged her marriage to a man named Santos, Perini remained silent and obedient. Some time later, on the night of the wedding ceremony, Farhan, who had long loved Purani, suddenly sneaked into her room, intending to persuade her to leave with him to the city of Chennai to pursue her dream of becoming a chef. Initially, Purani refused Farhan's offer as she not wanting to hurt her father again. At the same time, Purani's grandmother entered the room to fetch her. Without fear, Farhan immediately explained that he would take Purani to the city of Chennai so she could become a chef. After hearing this explanation, unexpectedly, Purani's grandmother urged her to go with Farhan because she didn't want her granddaughter dreams to be buried by an unwanted marriage. Initially, Purani was hesitant because she didn't want to hurt her father and was afraid of society's reaction. However, her grandmother urged Purani not to care about anyone else because, according to her grandmother, if Purani succeeded in becoming a famous chef, her father and society would support her. At the same time, if Purani failed, the same society would further scorn her. After that, her grandmother added that Purani had to take that risk and learn from the experience. She didn't want Purani to end up like her, so she asked Purani not to worry about her father because she could handle that issue. With a heavy heart, Purani hugged her grandmother and left with Farhan. After that, Purani's grandmother left the room and pretended to panic, saying that Purani had secretly run away. Shortly after, Ranga received a voice message from Purani explaining her apology. When she realized that her father would be blamed by everyone, so she would return after making her father proud. Not long after, Purani finally arrived in Chennai and temporarily stayed at Kirti's apartment. After that, Kirti immediately took Purani to apply for a job as a chef at a five-star hotel called the Royal Coliseum. At that time, the hotel's HRD was coincidentally out, so Purani was taken to meet the executive chef named Aswin. Upon meeting, Purani immediately asked for a job and admitted that she was skilled in cooking various types of food. However, Aswin, who turned out to be arrogant, coldly expelled Purani, stating that she was not fit to work in his kitchen. As Purani was leaving, she happened to see her idol, Chef Anan, entering the hotel. When she returned to Kirti's apartment, Purani faced eviction again because the landlord did not allow her to stay there if she didn't pay the rent. Unfortunately, Kirti hadn't returned from work, so there was no one to defend her, leaving her with no choice but to leave. After that, Purani's fate is uncertain and wandering in the streets, especially since she is now starving. Fortunately, Kirti's kind friends invited her to eat for free at a wedding event. While getting food, Purani suddenly criticized the shape and taste of the food there. Unexpectedly, the wedding party had hired catering services from the hotel where Aswin works, which of course made him unhappy with Purani's criticism. Surprisingly, Chef Anan was also there, and it turned out he was Aswin's direct boss and his biological father. At that moment, Chef Anan was very impressed and took the positive side of Purani's criticism, unlike Aswin, who eventually challenged her to showcase her cooking skills. Without hesitation, Purani immediately cooked the same food and made a special dessert for Chef Anan, the person who has been her inspiration since childhood. After that, Chef Anan was amazed by Purani's culinary creations and taste. The next day, Purani was also immediately accepted by Chef Anan to work in the Royal Coliseum's kitchen as a junior chef, while Aswin looked annoyed by the decision. As time passed, Purani continued to work hard and finally could earn enough money to pay the rent at Kirti's apartment. Sometime later, the hotel where Purani works was busy with the arrival of a special guest, the President of France, who planned to have lunch there. While others were busy preparing the dishes, Aswin arrogantly forbade Purani from helping. Shortly after, several French dishes were neatly presented on the table. Unfortunately, the President didn't like them because he had initially hoped for traditional Indian cuisine. Chef Anan felt very embarrassed upon hearing the president's words. Furthermore, when he entered the kitchen, he was disappointed to see that all of Aswin's Indian dishes looked ordinary. At that moment, Purani volunteered to make a special Indian dish. And when the dish was ready, Chef Anan became enthusiastic and begged the president, who was about to leave, to try the special dish. After that, the president finally agreed to try it. But when the president was about to use a spoon, Purani politely suggested eating the food with hands to enhance the enjoyment. The president followed Purani's suggestion, and as soon as he tasted the dish, 
he showed a very satisfied expression. In fact, the president even closed his eyes and praised Chef Anan's cooking. However, Chef Anan refused to accept praise for someone else's hard work. So he immediately introduced Purani, allowing her to explain the dish's heritage to the president. Apparently, the dish was rice made in the first century, even before modern biryani rice was invented. The president was impressed by Indian culture and cuisine. As a token of appreciation, the president finally gifted Purani a gold coin called the Angel Coin, a rare limited edition gold coin from France, as rare as Purani's abilities. For her achievement, Purani was immediately promoted by Chef Anan. Not only that, she was also chosen to represent the hotel in a cooking competition to vie for the title of India's best chef, which would be held in a few weeks. On the other hand, Aswin was not happy and intended to harm Purani. When he deliberately pretended to order a cake from Purani for a VIP customer, so she wouldn't suspect anything at that time. As soon as Purani finished making the dough and baking it in the oven, the oven suddenly caught fire and exploded, causing her to be severely injured and rushed to the hospital. Sometime later, Purani's family and friends were very worried about her condition, which was quite severe. Although she had disappointed her parents, they still took care of her and nursed her back to health. However, when Purani drank her mother's homemade juice, she complained that it wasn't sweet. Even though her mother had added plenty of sugar to the juice. Realizing this oddity, Purani panicked instantly and ate anything nearby but, she couldn't taste anything. Purani then cried loudly because since childhood, she could identify food even with her eyes closed, but now she couldn't taste anything. Shortly after, according to the doctor's examination, the previous accident had affected the nerves from the brain to the tongue, causing Purani to lose her sense of taste. Fortunately, her sense of smell was still intact. This reality was very painful for Purani because as a chef, losing her sense of taste was like losing everything and her dream of becoming the best chef in India was shattered instantly. After that, Purani vented her anger to her father by saying that he must be happy because she had failed. She then asked her father to take her home. Unexpectedly, when they left the hospital, Ranga didn't take Purani home but instead took her to meet Chef Anan. Ranga told Chef Anan about Purani's current condition. Moreover, he mentioned that since childhood, Chef Anan had been the one who inspired his daughter to become the best chef. And if Ranga took Purani home, then her choices and mistakes would be a permanent stain. However, Ranga didn't want that to happen. So, he would bear all the insults Purani received. Even though Ranga didn't like the path his daughter had chosen, but she must not give up and must prevail. Therefore, Ranga asked Chef Anan to help Purani until she succeeded. Since that day, Purani was entrusted to Chef Anan, where she was specially trained by him. Unfortunately, Purani's trauma made her cooking less delicious than before and she became more frustrated with this situation. But, Chef Anan tried to boost her spirits by explaining that even though she had lost her sense of taste, it didn't mean she couldn't cook anymore. If she cooked with love, the result would surely be delicious even without tasting it. Purani may have lost her sense of taste, but her love for cooking could never disappear. Thanks to Chef Anan's advice, Purani tried cooking again with confidence, and her cooking was tasted and judged by Farhan and her friends. Eventually, Purani succeeded in cooking delicious dishes again. On the other hand, Chef Anan already knew that the accident Purani had experienced was caused by a sween, who placed explosives in the oven. He detested this action but couldn't report a sween's crime because it would affect his reputation. After that, Chef Anan deliberately fired a sween from his position as executive chef. However, Chef Anan was disappointed during a meeting with the hotel's board of directors because they blamed Purani. To protect the hotel's reputation, Purani was blamed for negligence and dismissed disrespectfully. Meanwhile, a sween was chosen by the board to represent the hotel in the upcoming national cooking competition. With the board's decision, Chef Anan became upset, leading him to resign from the Royal Coliseum Hotel. The news of Chef Anan's resignation spread quickly, prompting owners of other star hotels to flock to him. After that, tempting offers were made to Chef Anan, ranging from directorship to ownership stakes. Moreover, the hotel owners were willing to make Purani their representative in the cooking competition. Upon learning this, Purani felt guilty, but Chef Anan asserted that his resignation was a form of responsibility for his mistakes as a leader. Not long after, the IBC cooking competition finally began. 
This prestigious event was broadcasted and watched by people from all over India. The winner of the competition would not only be crowned as the best chef in India, but also employed as the executive chef at a seven-star hotel in one of the most luxurious hotels in Dubai. The competition was attended by 16 contestants, including a Sween and Purani. With the challenge in the first round was to create a typical dish from a country chosen by each participant. Additionally, each contestant would be given some sort of obstacle, where a Sween was challenged to cook without a knife while Purani faced an unreasonable challenge of not being allowed to use a stove or fire. Unexpectedly, before the competition began, Aswin had bribed one of the organizers to ensure Purani lost. Shortly after, when the other contestants had already prepared their ingredients to start cooking, Purani was still confused about how to cook without fire. At that moment, Farhan tried to help Purani by giving her a hint, and she remembered a lesson from Arisu Pai, where she took rice grains, soak them for 10 minutes to soften, then mix them with raw bananas, vegetables, and some other ingredients in salt water until they were cooked without fire. However, Purani didn't know if her dish would taste good because she could only sense it through its aroma. After all the dishes were finished, it was time for the judges to taste them. Some dishes received praise from the judges, including a Sween's dish, which turned out to be delicious and beautifully presented. Next was Purani's dish, which originated from South India, at that moment, her dish looked very simple as it was served on a banana leaf. Nevertheless, its taste was not inferior to the other participants. After the judging was completed, out of the 16 contestants, only a few managed to advance to the next round, and Purani was not mentioned at all. Unexpectedly, the judges had intentionally saved a surprise for the end, where Purani's dish was announced as the best dish, and she was qualified to advance to the next round. After that, Many people are now starting to support Purani, including Santos, her former fiancé. Where Santos is seen trying to approach Purani because she has become popular. As time passed, Purani impressively passed through each round, until finally, the competition left Purani and Aswin qualified for the final round. However, with Purani making it to the final round, a significant controversy arose after Aswin once again cheated by bribing one of the committee members named Manohar to slander Purani. Manohar spoke loudly to the media, claiming that he had been paid by Purani to ensure her passage. After that, the slander against Purani immediately spread widely on social media, causing uproar and division among the public. Moreover, Purani was summoned by the Indian Chef Association and faced the threat of disqualification if found guilty in the investigation. Although the media didn't know that Aswin had cheated, Chef Anan remained convinced that his son was behind the slander. Chef Anan even declared that he would defend Purani. This statement angered Aswin, leading him to heartlessly assault his own father, who ended up hospitalized. Sometime later, during Purani's interrogation by the Indian Chef Association, she denied all accusations against her. Purani also claimed that she didn't know Manohar and explained that her interaction with him during the competition was merely to exchange greetings. She asserted that her cooking would still be delicious because she used her other senses and cited similar cases outside the culinary field, such as Beethoven, who was deaf but composed the best music, and Stephen Hawking, a great physicist despite being paralyzed. After hearing Purani's explanation, the association's leaders decided that Purani was not guilty and deserved to proceed to the final round. Not long after, the final round between Purani and Aswin finally began and the challenge this time was to cook the most popular dish chosen by the audience. Unexpectedly, the most chosen dish was biryani rice, and this posed the greatest challenge for Purani because her biryani rice had always been lacking in taste. At the same time, this made Farhan and Kirti nervous, knowing that biryani rice was Purani's culinary weakness. While Aswin began preparing to cook, Purani remained lost in thought. However, she suddenly remembered the words of Farhan's mother. According to Farhan's mother, her biryani rice was delicious not just because of the recipe, but because she always prayed to God before cooking. Unexpectedly, Purani's actions now surprised everyone after she prayed to God. Even more surprisingly, Purani sincerely asked for God's help to make her biryani rice delicious and special. After finishing her prayer, Purani started cooking with confidence. And when her dish was finished, for the first time, Purani's biryani rice tasted incredibly delicious. The same went for Aswin's biryani rice, which was equally delightful. After that, 
The judges were impressed by both contestants' dishes, and because it was difficult to choose, they eventually decided on a tie. However, there had to be a winner in every challenge, so the judges held an additional round with a taste-guessing test, where participants would have their eyes blindfolded and had to identify five food items placed in front of them. This test might have been unfair to poor Ani, who had lost her sense of taste, although she used to be able to easily answer such tests. Farhan even protested to the judges, but in cooking competitions, rules are absolute, especially since every chef must know the ingredients. In this challenge, Aswin was quite adept at identifying the ingredients by tasting them, while Purani had to rely on smelling and feeling their texture. After that, both Aswin and Purani were able to correctly identify up to the fourth ingredient. However, when it came to the fifth ingredient, Aswin answered incorrectly, while Purani, despite her initial struggle, managed to answer correctly. That also earned Purani a perfect score, and she finally became the winner of the competition. This signifies that Purani's dream has been fulfilled, which is to become the best chef in India. Purani, her family, and friends looked very happy, and even those who once scorned her now praised her. All the words and advice from her grandmother proved to be true, that society would surely support Purani once she was considered successful. Moreover, her victory is a triumph for women fighting against societal stigma in India. When Purani was about to receive the victory plaque, she called her father to join her on stage. At that moment, Ranga was very proud yet somewhat ashamed, as Purani, who was once underestimated and disappointed her family, now made the family name proud. Ranga then apologized for deliberately obstructing Purani's ambitions and returned the spatula he had broken. At the end of the film, Aswin decided to leave home and refused to continue his father's business. Meanwhile, Purani's career flourished, becoming the executive chef at a seven-star hotel in Dubai. However, Purani didn't forget her roots, where she decided to teach women in her village to strive and survive through food businesses. All of this Purani did because she reflected on how she found the path to success through Chef Anan. Moral lesson from the story, even if you lose your taste buds, you can still cook up a storm with a little prayer and a lot of heart. So, remember, even if life hands you bland biryani, just sprinkle some faith and determination to make it a flavor explosion.